Good morning, dear children. How are you feeling today? I am so happy that you had fun in doing the exercises during the last class. And thank you also for the feedbacks. And I will try to make the lessons fun and understandable for all of you. So before we start the lesson today, I just want to recall what you had learned during last class. So basically, you have learned that there are six ways of reproduction in plants, which is suckers, seeds, underground stems, stem cutting, spores, and also leaves. So today, we will enter a new subtopic, which is the importance of plant reproduction. Shall we start our lesson today? Okay, so have you ever wondered why plant reproduction is important? Plants always reproduce to increase their numbers and maintain their species. So why do you think it's important for them to do so? Have you ever wondered why? Plant reproduction is very important because they can supply food to animals and also humans. That is the first one. And the second one, they can produce primary source of materials. And the third one, they can provide shelter for animals. And the last one, they can provide, they also provide oxygen for humans and also animals to breathe. Children, before we start going deeply into each of these importance, Make sure to copy down this mind map in your exercise book. Let me explain how plant reproduction can supply food to animals and also humans. Through plants, the animals will be able to get their food supplies. For example, if you look at the picture in this slide, on the left side, the cow is herbivorous so they can eat greens from the plants. This applies to all of the animals that eat plants. Other than that, the food cycle of the ecosystem also will be stable. So how can we know that it is stable? Let us look at the picture in the right side. The plant is eaten by the cow, and then the cow is eaten by the tiger. So what does this mean? This means that all animals and humans will be able to get the food source. The next importance of plant reproduction is to produce primary source of materials. What is primary source of materials? In this case, we are talking about plants. So plants provide primary source of materials in producing something. So, what can we get from a tree? Do you know that we can get a lot of things just from a tree itself? All parts of a tree are composed of cellulose, which is produced by photosynthesis. What is a cellulose? Cellulose is the main structure that forms the main structure of a plant. And cellulose is also used in some of the wood and also paper product. And this is just an information for you that cellulose helps keeping the shape of the plant. Okay, so what can we get from a tree? Do you know that we can produce pulps through plants? They are part of the plants that we can use to produce clothes, such as cotton, viscose, and many more. You can search Google for more information. But plants have the primary source of materials that humans need to produce clothes. So that is the first one. And the second one, the second one, what can we get from a tree is paper. So humans use woods to produce paper. Now, I think most of us know that we can use woods to produce paper. 
all of the paper that we use to write on is made of tree. Do you know that because of the producing of papers, a lot of trees being cut down? It is very sad, right? So let us do little actions such as reducing the use of paper in our daily life. This kind of action can actually contribute in protecting the trees. I know we look at it as very little action, but I'm sure this can help in contributing in protecting the trees. Now, the next one, the next one is humans use woods for building material. Do you know that maybe some of you are living in um, houses that are made of woods? So this is where you get the building material from the trees. That is how the house is being built. And the next one is firewood. So humans use woods for firewood. So when you are in the forest and you need to have like uh, fire, like fire, fire, firewood. So you use woods for firewood. And when you want to do some BBQ, barbecue, you can also use woods if you don't have the charcoal. However, dear children, please bear in mind that all of these are possible if we replant all of the trees that have been cut down. If we don't do so, then we will not be able to get everything that I had talked before, that I had explained before. We will not get clothes, we cannot have paper, we cannot have woods for building materials our house, and we won't have woods for firewood. We cannot build fire. So, we have to make sure that the cycle is recycling every day. We need to replant all of the trees that had been cut down. Now, this is also an extra information for all of your children that maybe some of you don't know. So, do you know that you can also get all of these things from the plants? Do you know that we can make makeup? We can create makeups through plants. There are some part of the plants that we can use to make makeups and some part of the plants that we can use to make blankets. This one, the one in the left one, uh, left picture and it's below the makeup one. That one is blanket. And if you look at the right side of this slide, do you see to test there? So Actually, I also just Google and I found out that, oh yes, toothpaste is also one of those things that you can get from plants. And if you see below there, down there, that is medicine. Okay, that is medicine for malaria. So if you want more information on this, you can go, you can Google it. Okay, you can Google it for extra information, but we can... I'm just here stressing that you can get medicine through plants. Okay, so plants is the primary source of materials when you want to do some of the medicines. Not all, but some of them. So can you see how much a plant can contribute to humans actually? And can you see how they make life comfortable for us humans? Do you still want to harm them? No, right? Let us move into the third importance of plant reproduction, which is to produce shelter for animals. Do you know what is shelter? Shelter means home. So, I just want you to look at the slide. On the left side, there's a picture of animals living in the forest. So, the forest is like their home to the animals. So all animals need shelter to keep themselves safe from heat, cold, and also rain. Just like human, we need home to keep ourselves safe from the heat, the cold, and the rain. 
and the animals also need shelter to protect themselves against enemies. So there are a lot kind of enemies to the animals itself. So the shelter, the forest, is a place for them to protect themselves against the enemies. And most of the animals prefer living in the forest because they can easily get their source of food. Like maybe the monkey, they can easily get the bananas there and the bird, maybe they can easily get the worms in the soil. So that is what I meant when I said the animals prefer living in the forest because they can easily get their source of food. Now, I want you to imagine, can you live without a house? Can we human live without a house? No, right? Because we need shelter. We need home to keep ourselves safe from heat, cold, and also rain. Then, can you imagine what will happen to the animals if they don't have place to live? It's very sad, right? So, this slide is just an extra information for your children. So, have you heard about the wildfire in Australia and Amazon that happened last year and earlier this year? If you don't, then I suggest that you go and Google what happened or you can ask your parents to um, slightly introduce about what happened in Australia and Amazon to you because this is very alarming and it's a global issue which I believe that all of us should know. So if you look at the slide, the picture in the left side is a fire, okay? It's a fire occurring in Australia and also Amazon. So some of the wildfire actually occurs because of the human activities. Human activities is like when you cut down the trees and you don't replant them and when the weather becomes too hot, it will burn by itself. So that is what triggers the wildfire to happen. Okay, so what is the effect? of the wildfire. Now I want you to see at the right side of this slide, the right picture. So that is a picture of a koala recovering from burns. You know koala is very cute, right? So when you look at this picture, it looks very sad because your house is burned. So this is the picture of a koala that is rescued and is recovering from the burns. So children, do you know now that it's really important for animals to have shelter? We don't want them to extinct from this earth. We don't want that these animals are the animals that we will see now, but we cannot see in the future anymore. Okay, so this is our last slide, dear children. Are you still there with me? Can you still listen and pay attention to me? So, let's brace yourself. So, this is the last importance of plant reproduction, which is the fourth one also, which is to provide oxygen for humans and also animals to breathe. So, do you know that we humans and also animals, okay, that we need oxygen to breathe? So where do we get that oxygen? We get that oxygen from plants. Plants release oxygen that is for human to breathe in. So when we breathe out, do you know what do we release? We release carbon dioxide. We release carbon dioxide, which is useful for the plant to grow. Yes. So it's a cycle that will actually create a balance between the oxygen and carbon dioxide content in the environment. 
So, can you imagine what will happen to us humans if there is no plants? Like, there is no plants means there is no oxygen. So, how do we breathe? So, that is not a balance, a balance cycle anymore. So, we will always need plants around us for the cycle to be balanced, for the oxygen and carbon dioxide cycle to be balanced. So, I hope that today's lesson is understandable for you. I hope you can understand. And I will also actually give the uh, actual note in Google Classroom and also WhatsApp, maybe for those that don't have access to the Google Classroom. So, yes. So, this is it. So, this is where the slide, our class, our lesson will end. So, let us meet in another lesson, probably in next class. Thank you and have a great day and stay home, stay safe, and don't forget to do your revision. Bye children, see you when I see you.